She's dreamt of a freedom hug for 20 years. And today, Kathleen Folbig got just that. No prison greens, no cuffs, just the embrace of her best friend. I am so elated it's not funny. In 2003, the mum was found guilty of killing her babies. Sarah, Laura, Patrick and Caleb. A nation was in shock. This was Australia's worst female serial killer, who always insisted she was innocent. Now new scientific evidence has led to her pardon and release. At 55, Kathleen's life starts again on a quiet country property, which is where Hannah Sinclair is. Hannah, she's gone from a crowded prison to the silence of the bush. Yes, that's right, Ali. Kathleen Folbig's gone from a jail cell to this secluded, peaceful farm here in northern New South Wales, where she will spend her first night of freedom with her best friend, Tracy Chapman, and other loved ones. Her supporters have been preparing for this moment for a very long time, and it arrived this morning when New South Wales Attorney General Michael Daly unconditionally pardoned Kathleen and ordered her immediate release from prison. She walked free from jail just after 11 o'clock this morning and when she arrived here to the farm she told waiting media she's elated and she's going to celebrate with a drink. Hannah have you seen any visitors arrive today? Yes, Ali, there's been several people arriving to celebrate with Kathleen Folbig as to what the next few days will hold for her. Her best friend Tracy has set up her room here at the farm. It's quirky and colourful, very different to the darkness she's endured over the past few years. And we're also told she's got a comfortable bed after sleeping on a foam mattress for the better part of two decades. And just think she'll step outside tonight, look up and see the stars as a free person. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, Ali. If anyone is to understand what Kathleen is feeling right now, it's Lindy Chamberlain, who was jailed for murdering baby Azaria in the 1980s before being acquitted and freed. Stuart Tipple was her defence lawyer and he joins me now. Nice to see you, Stuart. I'm sure you remember that moment Lindy walked from jail. Kathleen did today after spending 20 years locked up. How significant is the decision to pardon her? I think very significant and I think that it really makes us all reflect on what went wrong and how can we stop it happening again. To reach this point, we know that Kathleen has always had a huge and growing group of supporters who stood by her, who fought hard for her. Would this have happened without them? No, absolutely not. The only reason you're actually getting the result today is because of the support that Kathleen's had. Well, Kathleen was found guilty based on the evidence of expert witnesses, and it was this idea there are four dead babies, it was unheard of, so it had to be foul play. But 20 years later, it's science that's freed her. Yes, and this is what can often happen. There are advances in science, and when you have a unique situation like that, you, you are going to get more data, and of course, over the 20 years, more data came out. Uh, but the sad thing is that you've lost the life. I mean, how do you ever compensate someone like Kathleen? This inquiry found that there was reasonable doubt. So I guess at the end of the day, that does mean there is still doubt. Well, the, the problem is you're never, ever going to be able to prove anything. And I mean, what is reasonable doubt? I mean, if you say I'm 99% sure, that still means in one in a hundred you're going to be wrong. So reasonable doubt's got to be higher than that. Um, and, and so what uh, we've seen today is really um, evidence that she should never have been convicted um, and that there really should have been uh, an acquittal at the trial. On paper, she's still Australia's worst female serial killer. Do you think she'll now fight to have her conviction overturned and clear her name? Absolutely. Uh, I think anybody uh, like her that's been branded like that, like Lindy, when Lindy was offered her pardon, I said, that's not enough. You really need an acquittal. You need to have that conviction quashed and actually uh, be declared an innocent person again. And that's what should happen to Kathleen now. If she goes down that road, um, is there a chance that the conviction will be quashed and a retrial ordered? Look, um, absolutely. Um, and I think that sometimes there are legislative changes that need to be made to have that happen. 
and that really, I think, is something New South Wales needs to address. You'd think that there is a strong case for compensation here. What price do you put on 20 years in the slammer? Absolutely. And, I mean, the, the sad thing is all she can get is money. How do you pay someone for 20 years? And, and it also, I think, we need to reflect on an injustice just doesn't affect Kathleen. I feel tonight very much for uh, her husband mm. uh, and the father of those children. And injustice just affects so many people, so many lives. And I feel very, very badly for him tonight too. And I, I just think of the, the whole process of just how harmful it is to them and to our society and our, our confidence in the whole judicial system. Yeah, I mean, you're right there that Craig Folbig has lived in this hell for the last two decades. This is the father of four little kids and he must miss them every single day. Stuart, appreciate your time. Thank you.